Mario Kart 8 Deluxe has officially become the most extensive Mario Kart game on a home console to date. With a whopping 96 courses, over 40 characters, and a multitude of features, it stands as a testament to the longevity of the Mario Kart 8 title. Originally released over 9 years ago, Mario Kart 8 Deluxe is an enhanced port of the Wii U game. It introduced new characters, a revamped battle mode, the return of the Boo and Feather items, and pays homage to the Double Dash's ability to hold two items simultaneously. Additionally, the game also includes an impressive 48 paid DLC courses and 8 characters which is just crazy to think about. G'day folks, my name is Swiftjar and with the conclusion of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe and its Booster Course Pass DLC, I thought it'd be a good opportunity to delve into the game's files and unveil the elements that didn't make it into the release version. This includes the unused graphics, skybox textures, unheard music tracks, and potentially scrapped DLC courses, among other hidden gems. I want to emphasize that this video is focused on highlighting the key insights rather than delving into every small detail. The information I'm sharing is derived from the discoveries made on the cutting room floor. For those eager to find out every small little detail, such as the world flags from the Wii U version still being in the files, I've included a link to their webpage for you to check out. This is also not taking into account the prototype version of this game. This is simply only the official Mario Kart 8 Deluxe game. You can utilize the timestamps down below to skip the certain segments in the video. And be sure to subscribe so you get to see my new Mario and Mario Kart videos as they go live. But without further ado, let's jump right into the intriguing discoveries lurking in the files of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Let's kick things off with a look at the unused graphics. Notably, the DLC icons from the Wii U version were discovered lingering in the files of Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. These icons represented in grayscale include specular maps and the bottom image serves as a normal map for all the icons. Additionally, there's a placeholder for the promotional banner of the Booster Course Pass DLC. This banner was present as early as the release of the first wave. Keen-eyed players were able to spot several courses that hadn't been officially announced at that time, such as Waluigi Pinball and the mysterious Sky High Sunday. The banner also teased Amsterdam Drift and Bangkok Rush before their official releases in Mario Kart Tour. Almost all the courses from the banner made it into the DLC. Only three here remain elusive and never materialized. These include Super Mario Kart's Mario Circuit 1, Mario Kart Tour's Remix Mario Circuit 1, and Mario Kart Tour's N64 Choco Island Team. Now let's delve into the realm of Skybox textures, and this gets a little intriguing. Four Skybox models retain sky textures from Mario Kart Tour, indicating that these were a direct pour. The four Skybox models in question are Wii Maple Treeway, DS Mario Circuit, Tour Singapore Speedway, and Waluigi Stadium. Waluigi Stadium from Double Dash is particularly noteworthy, as it actually features the sunset background, which was from the original in the Wii remake. This was then obviously reused in the Tour Remake, which came out later, where Mario Kart 8 Deluxe's version has Waluigi Stadium set at night time. What's extremely interesting is that the sunset scene was also present in the banner promotional art. This suggests that the skybox of Waluigi Stadium may have changed later in development, which potentially explains its shift from Wave 3 to Wave 4, a point that we'll explore further shortly. Moving on to the musical side of things, there are unused music intros for the Boost Course Pass that were left behind in the game's files. I won't be playing them here, but you can listen to them through the link provided in the description. Most of these can now be listened to via the music player, but the unique intros can be challenging to hear, as the first variation of the song always starts. Among these, there are unused intros for the Chinatown version of Singapore Speedway, an underwater portion of Cooper Cape, and We Move You Highway City version. Some some early in development music for tracks were also found in the files when Wave 2 dropped, giving players a preview of what was to come. And looking back, these all came to surface in the end. There's also the prefix leak known as the prefix data mine that was found in the game's files after Wave 1 release. This identified what game in the Mario Kart series each new track would be. This was 100% accurate for Wave 2 and almost for Wave 3, but then it was switched up slightly as we went on. What makes this extremely interesting though is that the file names of the courses list them differently compared to how they actually appear in game. For example, Tor Berlin Byways is listed as CNSW35. 
indicating that it would be the fifth course in Wave 3. While most future courses do have their correct placement, many were also shifted around or moved to entirely different ways, revealing that certain courses from games were cut and swapped around. For instance, Wii Maple Tree Way was CNSW62, which was initially planned for Way 6 but moved to Way 3. Here's a screenshot of all the courses that were switched around. This is where things get a little interesting. CNSW underscore 63, which is Wii Moonview Highway, and CNSW 67, which is Rosalina's Ice World, didn't originally have a course prefix in earlier leaks. This is implying that they were either scrapped non-city courses, or these were just simply placeholders. The reason that people have come to this conclusion is because that all courses in the prefix data mine that didn't have prefixes lined up to be non-city Mario Kart tour tracks, such as Yoshi's Island and Squeaky Clean Sprint. Another point of interest is that CNSW 66, which is Wii Daisy Circuit, originally had a GTN prefix in earlier leaks. This suggests that it was either a scrap course from Mario Kart Double Dash or was just simply a placeholder. At one stage, Wave 6 was meant to have three non-city Nitro tracks, but only one made it into the final release being Piranha Plant Cove. This unfortunately meant that Piranha Plant Pipeline was ultimately scrapped altogether. Now that we're halfway through the video, I'd love to suggest that you join the Swift Cafe Discord, where you can chat with Mario and Mario Kart fans 24-7 and even have the opportunity to feature in a future video of mine. You can find your invitation along with my Twitter handle down in the pinned comment below. Now let's move on to some unused courses. Firstly, all the courses that were used as battle arenas in the Wii U version still have their code in the files, allowing them to be accessed and battled on with some hacks. There are also some leftovers for a test course called test underscore dance floor. All that remains here though is some lighting data. In the image on screen, you can see how Mario Circuit would look if I had this course's lighting environment file. There are also scenes that have once been planned for a racing mode where the racers go around the course backwards. This can be seen as there are six references to Gaia which means reverse run in Japanese. This concept later resurfaced in Mario Kart Tour as the R and RT variants of tracks, or better known as the reverse and reverse trick variants of tracks. Moving on, I also found extremely interesting that there is several hidden coins and item boxes in certain tracks. In particular, these are courses that don't have coins like Mute City and Big Blue, but they actually do have a coin loaded in, but they are in hidden places so you can't normally see them. These are loaded in because it does require or else the game will crash. The same goes for GCN Baby Park and DS Room Ridge, but with stationary item boxes, as those tracks only have moving item boxes and stationary ones are needed to actually have the game running. There are also some unused Wii Coconut Mall car settings, which do look like something you see in Mario Kart Wii. Unfortunately, these were left out when Wave 1 did launch, showing that these routes were indeed intended to be for the cars when this track launched. But as we all know, it launched with no moving cars. Thankfully though, when Wave 2 did drop, we did get those moving cars back, but it is different to how they move in the files. Lastly, there were also a few unused models left in the files. These specifically included the bomb car, which was directly taken from Mario Kart Wii, and the test version of the prison used in Renegade Roundup. The bomb cars in particular were removed in the files later on, which makes a lot of sense looking back at it, as these came back in Wii Movie Highway and were updated. But with that, these were the main pieces of cut content for Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that I found through researching. Please note that all credit goes to the cutting room floor and I highly suggest you check them out for every tiny little detail. But what did you think of all of this? Be sure to let me know down in the comment section below. Also, be sure to check out my other Mario Kart and Mario related videos, such as my Mario RPG World Ranking and Mario Wonder World Ranking videos. I worked extremely hard on these videos and would love for you all to see them. If you enjoyed this video, it'd be much appreciated if you could leave a like and subscribe. Thank it honestly helps out the channel a lot. Finally, a massive shout out goes to all of our members. You are all absolute legends and you inspire me to always make the best possible content that I'm capable of. Until next time, take care and goodbye.